December. I hope you're all keeping well and you've had a good week from we spoke last. Um, this week I wanted to um, spend a couple of minutes chatting to you about the word prepare. Gosh, this is the time of the year that you really focus on preparation, isn't it? You want to be super organised. You want to be on top of things. You want to have your shopping done early, the food in. You want to have the presents wrapped. You just want to be on top of your housework and you're just trying to keep super organised. But I wanted to think just more about preparing for Christmas and the celebration of Christ's birth, not so much the commercialization of it. You know, preparation is really important. And as I've said, you know that, don't you? But when Mary and Joseph were on the mission that they were on, as they were waiting for the birth of Jesus, they had to be prepared as well. No one plants a seed and you get up the next day and you expect to have a harvest. You don't expect your lettuce or your carrots to grow within 24 hours, sure you don't. There's things you do in between times. You water them, you weed them and you use your time to look after them before the crop's ready. And you know, God calls us to cultivate our lives as well um, in that in-between period for, from, for his coming. He says that we are to rest in the fact that God has his has our future in his hands. I'm sure you, most of you maybe know the story of the prodigal son. And it's just, I just want to share it as an example of how the, the father used his time. You know, the son, he wasn't going to change his mind. The son was for leaving and that was it. And the son left. But, you know, the father never gave up hope. He started to feed the calf. And he started to prepare for the son returning home. And, you know, I'm sure he looked out many a day over the horizon in the hope that he might see his son returning home. You know, it says that preparation is a statement of our faith. It's committing to trust, even though you're hurting or you're heart sick. Every detail of the Christmas story tells us that Mary and Joseph endured more than their fair share of trials as they waited for Jesus' birth. Mary had to leave town and Joseph had to, didn't have to, but Joseph stood, be, stood beside her even though um, it was just an angelic dream that he was basing his trust in. And you can hear the neighbours sort of gossiping, can't you, about Mary's conception and being unmarried, etc. And the scandal around her pregnancy. But despite all that, they prepared and they endured it all to be on a much greater mission than any carpenter's family could ever imagine. You know, we're asked to prepare um, for God's plan as well. And, you know, as we prepare for Christmas, do we often think about what God's will is in store for what God's what God will has in store for you and for me. Maybe we could use this time rather than spending all our time focusing on preparation for the festivities as we see them today. We maybe could take some time and we could just think about about our faith and think about the preparation that God wants us to be doing. And how can you make time for that? Um, because obviously you have to um, make time. How about eliminating some distractions? You know, you have to realise what the distractions are. So you could take a few minutes and just think about what's in your life. What's distracting you from spending time with God, if you are a Christian. And what's distracting you from even thinking about your faith and thinking about having a relationship with Christ, if you're not already a Christian. And when you do find those distractions, what do you have to do? You have to work with them. You have to sort them out, don't you? But you know, there's a verse in the Bible in Hebrews and it says, Simplif just to simplify our lives, um, just to be still, to listen to God's voice. And it says, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and the perfecter of faith. And you know, if we keep our eyes on Jesus through this festive period, 
we will enjoy it so so much more because we will be focusing on the true and the real meaning of Christmas. How about reflecting just on the last year? A lot of people do and a lot of people probably can't wait to see the to see the end of 2021 and are hoping that 2022 is much better for them. Every family I'm sure has situations that they just um, would like to see the turn off, wouldn't they? But you know, there's also the good in reflecting as well, isn't there? You can look on the miracles that have happened in your life. Um, you don't always see them and you maybe don't see them as miracles. You know, perhaps you have been suffering, but you've come through that suffering. God has been carrying you through. And maybe it's only through reflecting that you realise that. There was words of Joseph in the Old Testament and he said in Genesis, You planned evil against me. God planned it for good. You know, so sometimes in the bad and in the difficult situations, God has planned it for the better and you've come out the other side, generally a better person. But you know, we can't understand and we can't know what God's will for our lives is unless we ask him. And it's only through, it's only through asking that um, we can live the way God wants us to live. In Proverbs, it says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his steps. So it doesn't matter how much we prepare or we plan, God will lead us in the way he wants us to go. Some of the things maybe we could do, there's just four wee things here um, maybe worth thinking about. You know, we can share our faith with our family. Um, we can share time together and use our time wisely to make some preparations, not only for um, the festivities and for the festival period, but preparing our lives that we could maybe have family time, that we could spend time around God's word as a family. Um, and just use it um, as an opportunity to come together. How about evaluating your um, distractions? Realising what's keeping you from worshipping Christ this Christmas. And you know the most important thing is prayer. Um, we can pray and ask God to show us what he wants us to do. How he wants us to live. And then you know we can take... The answer to those prayers and we can go out and we can put it into practice. It mightn't be something major like going on a missionary trip or anything like that. It could be just maybe when you're out shopping putting that extra piece of um, shopping into the donation basket at the till for a family. And you know all these things although they take time they're all done in God's will. This is what God wants for our lives. He wants us to live a life um, that is pleasing to him. So just as we prepare for Christmas, let's take a minute and think about the true meaning of Christmas and preparing our hearts as well. This has been maybe a bit mumble jumbled. It's easier sometimes when you have the thought in your mind um, than it is speaking it or putting it into putting it into words. But I hope maybe in it you've got something um, to give you a wee bit of um, idea to think um, over the preparation for Christmas and the true meaning of Christmas. Take care until I see you again next week. God bless.